We are back for the second installation of Extra History series on Wu Zetian. Um, I'm really excited about this series because it's um, kind of one of the first times I've gotten into the history of a non-Western nation. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked to be just dipping, just a little toe, like my like little pinky toe, dipping into the vast pool of Asian history. I'm super excited about it. First and foremost, what up Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten back at it again. So this one, uh, like I said, it's the second part and it says uh, China's most famous murder. And you guys know I love a little, little bit of murder, a little bit of political intrigue. I'm just, at the end of the day, I really like drama. Like other people's drama, not my drama. I don't like to be involved in drama. When I get involved in drama, I get very distressed, okay? It gives me a lot of anxiety. But observing other people's drama, just kind of like watching, I'm like, hmm, interesting. I'm going to make a mental note of every single detail so that I can relate it to my husband and my best friend later. So, anywho, since I hope you guys are doing well, hope you guys are staying safe and sanitized. We left off in the last one with Wu Zetian was supposed to be sent to a nunnery, but instead she flirted with the emperor's son. He like splashed a little water on her and she was like, I accept all blessings or I don't know, some something hoary like that. <laughs> And so now we're gonna see like how she started making her way up the food chain. You feel me? Um, hope you guys are doing well, staying safe and sanitized. I'm super excited to see what this video has in store for us. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Chang'an, China, 649 CE. Okay. Once Lady Wu lived in the palace. Once she attended the emperor and flirted with the prince regent. Mm -hmm. Once she was known as the fair flatterer, a nickname comparing her to a popular ballad. But now she sits in the Buddhist convent. Oh my her gosh, she did dead, go! Her hair shorn and her life over. <gasps> her lover, the new emperor, had promised to send for her. But right. as she watches the leaves outside begin to curl and fall, she worries that she too will dry up and die here. You dirty bastard, you left her there? How could you? How could you? She writes him a poem. Watching red turn to green, my thoughts entangled and scattered. I am disheveled and torn from my longing for you, my lord. She dispatches it to the palace. And soon after, the emperor Gaozong arrives to offer incense to the Buddha. But upon seeing each other, the two burst into tears and the court begins to whisper. Mm -hmm. Within a year, fair flatterer Wu will be back at court mm -hmm. and the harem will descend into war. It's very interesting. Like, why did he leave her there in the first place if he was just gonna come get her? He, he wanted her to freaking, what's that, what's that word that they use on Love Island UK all the time? Uh, put, put in a bit of graft. She, she had to graft him. This meeting of Wu and Emperor Gaozong is the traditional story of how the two came back together. Uh -huh, but there uh -huh. are reasons to doubt it. It's been pointed out, for example, that Buddhist nuns must shave their hair. Yet the record states that within a year of returning, Wu's hair had reached seven feet long, <laughs> suggesting she never cut it at all. Likewise, Buddhism was not yet a favored religion in the Confucian court, mm -hmm. making Wu's exile there a strange aberration. Right. Due to these inconsistencies, it's been suggested that the convent was actually a cover, a way to keep Wu close enough to the palace to right. visit, but also out of sight so Gaozong could carry on their affair in secret. Mm -hmm, Either way, mm -hmm. someone else appeared to notice that the two were still attached. Right. Gaozong's chief wife, Empress Wang, oh, and, shit. and Wu. The Empress thought she found the perfect solution for a problem she was having. Okay. See, Empress Wang was a highborn, smart, and refined lady. Mm -hmm. A good mm -hmm. wife for Gaozong. You can tell that she highborn from the headdress. You see? Look how fancy. Very cutesy, you might say. <laughs> it's that little tidbit is gonna be in all of my videos for the foreseeable future. I just I just enjoy it so much. <laughs> But she wasn't really a good match for him personally, mm -hmm. and she didn't seem to be able to have children. Damn. This made her position incredibly precarious. Her main job was to provide an heir, after all, and that wasn't happening. She not doing In it. In fact, she was so worried about being demoted that she took the drastic step of adopting the children of lesser concubines oh, to give herself legitimate she heirs. She yoinked that but nigga. But the biggest threat to Wang was from Gaozong's favorite concubine, pure mm -hmm. consort Xiao. 
Okay. Not only was Xiao more beautiful and amenable than Wang, but right. she'd given the emperor one son and two daughters. Oh, shit. Worse still, that son was a straight-up child prodigy. Mm -hmm. Real crown prince material. Of course And Xiao was. had riled up a court faction that was pressuring Gao Zong to name her son his new heir. Right. So in Wu, Empress Wang saw a weapon to break mm -hmm. up this love triangle, uh -huh. move Wu back to the palace, and Gao Zong would spend all of his attention on her and forget about Xiao. And since Wu had been Gao Zong's father's concubine, and any union between them would be legally incestuous, mm -hmm. Wu could never be promoted to replace Wang. Okay, huh? all right, this girl is, 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 she's making moves. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're the best moves, okay? But the reasoning is there, and, it, 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 and it, 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 it's pretty, man, solid would just be doing so much heavy lifting here. There is a logic to it, that I can understand. I don't necessarily agree because you don't like, yeah, right? But I mean, I guess Henry VIII wasn't there to be an example to them back then. So they didn't know that like legality is only legality as long as the king decides that it's like legality. You feel me? You, you get it? You guys got it. If you were sitting at home thinking this sounds like a horrible plan, well, that's because it was. Yeah. But let's keep a few things in mind here. Firstly, these three, Gao Zong, Empress Wang, and Xiao, were all in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. So, like, basically, imagine them as a bunch of college juniors, and this plan's logic kind of makes a little more yeah. sense, right? Yep. Second, mm -hmm. they weren't used to palace intrigue. I mean, Gao Zong was never even supposed to become emperor. Exactly. He was the third soft son of Tai Zong, whose two older brothers were jockeying for the title of heir. Mm -hmm. But their rivalry became so intense that they'd both independently hatched plots to depose their father and gotten banished to remote border postings. Yep. And look, I know you'd like to hear about that as well. And honestly, you kind of should. Because, mm -hmm. oh boy, that story is just full of the juiciest juicy juice. I feel like... I, f I feel like this is his way of telling us we're not going to get it, by the way. There's secret gay lovers, murder plots, and people dressing up as Turkic nomads. But what? if we stop this series and detail every subplot of palace intrigue, this series would last a lifetime. Who's upset about that? Who doesn't want that? Because I want that. Give it to me. That sweet, that nasty, that history stuff. <laughs> I'm a dork. <laughs> A too much tea to spill. This is Imperial China after all. They have a lot of tea. Heck, they invented it. Mm. Getting back to the point, though. Both Wang and Xiao had joined Gao Zong's harem when he was the third son. And now this high-pressure environment of plots and intrigue mm -hmm. surrounding an emperor was very new to them. They wasn't ready. So Wu returned to the Imperial harem as a handmaiden to Empress Wang, mm -hmm. where the Empress could keep tabs on her and get FaceTime with the emperor when he saw his old favorite. And at first, it worked. Xiao's hold on Gao Zong lessened as he became reinfatuated with Wu, right. showering her with gifts. But what Wang didn't realize was that Wu had already spent 11 years in the Imperial exactly. Herald and in that yeah. time had learned to be quite the canny mm -hmm. operator. Mm -hmm. For instance, instead of eating the sweets that Gao Zong brought her, Wu shared them with the servants of the harem. Rather than wear the fine jewelry he lowered around her neck, mm -hmm. she used it to win the loyalty of other concubines or oh, by influence God. among court factions. Yep. See, in their rivalry, both Wang and Xiao's popularity had dwindled in the harem. Mm -hmm. They'd become haughty and arrogant, treading rough on those beneath them. Wu, by contrast, used the emperor's gifts as a war chest to win allies and set up an intelligence yep. network. How to Within win a friends year, and influence people. Wu had people. spies in every part of the harem and friends at court. After all, many of those high officials had sisters, nieces, and daughters who were also imperial concubines. Exactly. Many were also from noble families connected to the two previous dynasties who were currently on the outs now that the upper realms of the court were stacked by men who'd fought in the rebellion to establish the Tang. Mm -hmm. She targeted younger people, particularly those who had been dishonored, had something to prove, or that had a flaw that held them back. Mm -hmm. And gradually, she poisoned court opinion of both Wang and Xiao. Damn. Side note, she was almost continuously pregnant for those three years <laughs> having two sons yet another disaster for empress wang that was the other thing that i was really confused about like this girl can also have kids i don't i don't understand how you don't see that as a threat i just i don't understand and a daughter a daughter Gao Zong was so excited to see mind you that upon her birth wu came to get him and they went to meet the baby arm in arm but Aww. as they approached the crib, they quickly realized something was wrong. Oh, no. The infant was too still to be sleeping. <gasps> it was dead. 
No. Howling in agony, the bereaved parents asked a maid what had happened, to which she could only answer that the empress had come for her formal visit to the child and, finding Wu absent, had played with the girl before leaving. <gasps> Wu immediately accused Wang of poisoning the baby out of jealousy. Damn. Now, later tales speculated that Wu killed the child herself in order to frame Wang for its murder. Damn. But a far more likely explanation is that it simply was a tragic but not uncommon case mm -hmm. of crib death that yeah. then Wu turned to her political advantage. Sids. Either way, the slander worked. Yep. Wang lost favor and was tainted by the scandal. Damn. While Zong began to talk openly about demoting Wang. Ugh. At first, he discussed simply promoting Wu to a new rank of chief consort, which would sit between full empress and mm -hmm. second rank concubines. She can't be but full soon empress. he was discussing replacing the empress herself. But to do that, they would need the assent of the ministers, right. the old guard, Taizong's companions from the war, who still ran things. Yeah. And man, oh man, did they those guys like distrust Wu. Of and course. quite frankly, were disgusted with her background. So Wu turned up the heat, having the emperor host lavish dinners for them, where he plied them with gifts, and she activated her agents at court to bring mm -hmm. more pressure. The break came when she enlisted an aristocrat known for being, to put it in mild terms, a, uh, oh, here it is, a sneaky little snaky snake. Cat Lee, he was called, <laughs> the sword in the smile. Okay. Both nicknames coming from his duplicitous nature. Uh -huh. He was the one who openly proposed the change, mm. but the ministers resisted until Wu delivered the coup de grace on both of her rivals. Okay. An agent told her that the Empress and Consort Xiao, joining forces against a common threat, had been practicing witchcraft against oh, her, shit. sticking needles and dolls to try to kill her with Taoist spells. Oh, shit. The use of such magic in the palace was a Forbidden. capital crime, yeah. considered as serious as trying to stick the emperor and his chosen consort with real life blades. Right. And that was that. Empress Wang and consort Xiao were Done. stripped of their ranks and Done exiled those. deep Damn. into the Damn. She fucking did it, bro. She did it. And you know what it was? Is that she didn't try to do nothing flashy. She didn't try to go too fast, okay? She moved slow. Slow and steady wins the king's and five years after returning to court, Wu took the position as Empress at mm -hmm. Gaozong's side. Mm -hmm. And her rivals? Well, traditional accounts have it that Wu ordered their hands and feet chopped off God. and that they be thrown into a vat of wine. Uh, yeah, and I remember supposedly this. as they drowned, she said something to the effect of, now those witches can get drunk to their bones. Oh, of course, okay. that's okay. almost certainly a fabrication. Yeah, the truth that's nuts. being not quite as fancy. Wu simply had them assassinated. them sent like super far away <laughs> but also this was very smart on her end you can't leave loose ends like that laying around you know they got that's that sounds bad but you can't you can't have them lying around it's like that whole thing uh that Chavez talks about sometimes about how like um when they used to talk about like killing people's kids you know it, it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't just to be like oh i'm gonna erase your lineage but it was just like if I leave your kid alive, he could come back to try to kill me. I'm not trying to deal with that T 10 years, 15 years down the line. So, yeah, this makes sense. It's it's not, you know, we could argue about the morals of it, but it, it makes sense politically. Whether by poison, blade, or a forced suicide, she had done what Empress Wang had wished, mm -hmm. broken a love triangle once and for all. Mm -hmm. But they would not be the last rivals she had killed because she had an empire to run. Exactly. And as we're going to find out next week, empires are lubricated with blood. That's a crazy thing to say. Empires are lubricated with blood. That's nuts. That's nuts. You trying to tell, never mind. I'm not going to say what I was going to say because it's not appropriate. But the point is, that was insane to say, and I loved it. I really enjoyed that. This is fascinating. I'm having such a good time. Extra History always does such an excellent job of laying the groundwork in like the first couple episodes, right? And then you really get into the meat and potatoes later with the understanding that you got from the first couple of videos. And I just, I really love that they managed to do that. And I just, I know so much time and hard work goes into them. And I just, I, I just really appreciate it. And as like a, his, as a little mini history buff, like I love it, you know? I just, uh, it makes me want to go back in and, and go back for more history degrees. It really does. It makes me want to go back to school. But your girl already has enough student loans. So we're, we're not gonna do that anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. And other than that, peace out, Hope Biscuits. It's skittin' lit.